Hey BCA, welcome here. I've got a good friend of mine, Matt Chenard, with me. Uh, we played hockey here at Briarcrest for, for one year and uh, he's from Camrose, Alberta and uh, he owns a gym in Camrose. Maybe you can share a little bit about, about that gym that you own, Matt. Yeah, thanks for having me, Caleb. Really excited to talk with you guys. Um, I own a gym. It's called Greater Purpose Health and Fitness. It's actually a CrossFit affiliate as well. We've been situated here for, this is our eighth year, I believe. Um, and I know we're talking about perseverance and endurance and trials and hardships and adversity, all those good things that we've definitely gone through as a business. Hmm. Um, because I was just telling Caleb before we hopped on here that we've been closed for four of the 12 months. So a lot of the principles, um, I've been practicing and habits have really come into play. Right on. Yeah, that's that's one of the as Matt alluded to. That's one of the main reasons I brought Matt on, in here today is because of our chapel theme, perseverance, and wanting to build endurance in our lives. And uh, as I followed Matt on social media and seen the things that he and he's doing and his gym and his business is doing, uh, I felt like it tied in really well. So uh, maybe Matt, if you could share with us uh, in the gym, what's one exercise that you're currently able to do that you're most proud of? Yeah, this is kind of funny because we're in the midst or last week or four week lockdown. So we have very limited equipment. Um, I have the ability to take more home, but I wanted to kind of maintain fitness the same way our members are right now and be in the same place as they are. So favorite exercise, I wouldn't say I have one at the moment. If I'm in the gym, it's honestly gymnastics which is quite comical because i'm six foot six right. you wouldn't <laughs> think i'm someone to be gymnastically inclined which maybe i'm not but i just enjoy it um so as of right now just getting creative and finding uh some fun in it all nice well back in the day i know you could lift some pretty heavy squats so <laughs> Matt, Matt's is that like telling the old college stories what's that telling the old college stories back in college oh, i could yeah 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 and uh, anyway, we'll move on from that. Uh, okay, so Matt, so we, we played one year at Briarcrest together. You were here a little bit longer than I was at the beginning. Uh, so how did your time at Briarcrest impact your faith? Maybe you could share that with our students. Yeah, so um, born and raised in a Christian family, accepted God into my life when I was five, I believe. And then through my hockey career, I ended up in Briarcrest for two years, played hockey there on the college team. Now, as I was thinking about this, I think it's more the seeds that were planted while I was there, yeah. um, more than being able to like really pinpoint this is the thing that had the biggest effect on me. But one of the things I could draw back to is in Carl Hendrager's class, um, I can't actually remember the class, but it was one of the assignments was to memorize uh, a book of the Bible. And I, I chose James. So I memorized that book and it, it was fruitful in the time. Like I found a lot of benefit, but honestly through 2020, and I think we're all aware of what 2020 is, I, uh, I've been able to draw a lot from that. So I, for me, it's not as much really seeing what happened in that time, but more the seeds that were planted that I can now really draw back on and really apply in my own life. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Briarcrest is a very formative place and sometimes it's hard to see what, what the value might be in the midst of it. But as you can see in hindsight, there's always lots that, that comes from your time here. Uh, okay, so um, as you're aware, Matt, I've shared with you and, and students, you guys have heard this lots, but our chapel theme for the year is perseverance. And the goal is that we would build endurance in our lives. And that as we learn to endure through the, the normal adversity that we face in our lives, uh, that when the adversity comes and it actually tests our faith, then we actually hopefully have a little bit more ability to persevere and build that endurance in our life. And so uh, in one of your social media posts that I saw, Matt, uh, back in October, uh, you wrote, over the past five years, I have continually and consistently put myself into uncomfortable situations, sitting in a sauna, two degree ice baths, public speaking, sharing these thoughts with you, uh, 1800 calories on the assault bike without music. Uh, I'm curious, can you tell us a little bit more about why you made such an effort over the past five years to put yourself in uncomfortable situations? 
most of us would never willingly do that. And so uh, I want to I want you to share with our students why why are you doing these kinds of things? And maybe there's other things that weren't mentioned in this that you do. Feel free to share. Yeah, and I think I can kind of theme this. So I, I gave myself a theme word for the year. It's called discomfort, but I've disassociated the dis and the comfort. So why I did that is hmm. over time from putting myself in these situations or doing or having the self-discipline in these habits, I have noticed that it's uncomfortable, but that's where a lot of comfort for me can be found. Mm. Um, I like to draw back to fitness in some way, shape or form sometimes, because it's easy for us to understand. When we go into the gym, we work out and we break down our muscles. Like there, there's, there's a painful aspect to it, right? It's, right. it's uncomfortable. But this discomfort, um, this moment is needed to grow and be refined in that. Um, so the same th way in my life I've noticed is it's like one of those principles that you can apply to anything. Um, the more uncomfortable I get and recover from it, like right. it's not needless or it's not, there's not, there is a purpose within it. Mm -hmm. The more I grow, the more I grow the less fear has over me. So the reason I mentioned public speaking and ice baths and things like that is I was quite adverse to pain in that way or mm -hmm. looking like I was a failure. So even in hockey, I would limit what I would do on the ice because I didn't want to make a mistake or I didn't want to be put on a pedestal and people see me as mm -hmm. a failure or make a mistake. So that was a fear of mine. So what I've noticed is when I apply myself and actually search out those things I'm afraid of and apply some principles and habits in my life, like doing this with you, I would never have done this before, hmm. but I know that's where the fruit lies. That's where the growth lies. And the continuation of committing to this by my own choice of doing things that are uncomfortable will help me grow and will help me impact others because that's what it's about too is impacting others to pursue their faith and live that kind of life right on and uh for those of you who, who uh this is your first time hearing about matt uh another thing that i saw on your social media was that you you were doing a you went to to do a fundraiser i think for some organization organization yep. in your community and you rode a stationary bike for five hours with, I believe, no music and nothing to yeah. stimulate your mind, like nothing to watch. Yeah. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about why, about that and maybe um, what you learned from that experience? Yeah, I, uh, there's a few points I took away from that. And the one thing I took away is the importance of having a strong purpose or strong why or understanding mm -hmm. God's purpose in the things we do and our life. Um, because if I did that, like I raised money for um, food for people during the holidays. That's why I did it through. Mm. And I did it also to develop myself. So that's the why behind it. If I, it was like a shallow, I just wanted people to admire me or be looked up to, mm -hmm. I might be able to make it through, but it's a lot harder. So I've been able to apply that in other aspects of my life by understanding it's important to know why you're doing it have this deep rooted why that keeps you motivated and keeps you gives you the ability to have the endurance to fight through those adversities my other one i had was um i was trying to make this perfect i had it all set up i was going to do it in the gym i was going to do it three months ago four months ago but things get, kept getting get shut down at the gym um so I was letting perfection limit the ideal uh, idealization of perfection, mm -hmm. limit my action. Um, so I just committed two days prior. I said, I'm going to do it this day and I'm going to record it. I'm going to put it on social media. And that's the third point I had from that is the accountability. Mm -hmm. um, I committed to it out loud. I put myself on screen. So that really yeah. limited my ability to not get off the bike. Um, and then the last thing I took away from that, the big one is it's a choice. Um, 
the choice becomes more consistent. Like it's easier to do the choices the more consistently you do them. Um, but the, the process of growth is still going to be uncomfortable because it's the same principle as if I do 20 squats in the gym one day, I can't go in and do 20 squats the next day because my body's adapted. It understands that I need to do 22 squats. So mm -hmm. it's this continuation of getting uncomfortable. So my goal in by 2023 is 24 hours on a bike. <laughs> Crazy. Which, yeah. And the last thing, the biggest thing I think is the reason I didn't have any stimulus or listen to anything or watch anything is the understanding that we are overstimulated. Um, social media, worries, anxieties, fears, um, problems, troubles, like these are all real things, but we often find ourselves getting overstimulated with emotions and we don't know how to right. handle that because we're not still, we, we don't create the space to hear God. Hmm. Cool. Hey, well, thanks for sharing. I, I, as I saw that you did a five hour stationary bike ride, I thought, man, I don't know if I <laughs> could ever do it. But I never, I've never had the same why like that, right. that you have. So, um, anyways, good on you. And I, you. I'd love to see the 24. Well, I might not be able to watch the 24 hour video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I'll be awake for it all. Maybe I'll have to sleep. That's awesome. But you can't really train for that either, which makes it really hard. Like I'm right. not going to hop on the bike for, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do it. Right. Crazy. Okay. Um, maybe another question here is, uh, how have these disciplines and habits that you've you've in, incorporated into your life, how have they specifically impacted and affected your relationship with Jesus and your faith? Yeah, it's, it's had a huge impact. It's made it real for me. Um, I've always gone to church, uh, went to Bradcrest, um, <laughs> been a Christian my whole life, but what that meant to me, mm -hmm. honestly, just started to hit me this year. Uh, when I started committing to not living in this fear, and when I say not living in this fear, I mean, not letting it control me because I still have fear. Yeah. I was still very anxious before I felt very anxious yeah. before I got on the bike, but it was this choice of walking in faith and knowing that if I do this five hour bike, maybe that'll inspire one person it'll impact one person. And the more I'm in those uncomfortable situations, honestly, the closer I feel to God and it, I don't want people to misinterpret that and think they have to go sit in an ice bath or sit on a bike for five hours. Like right. discomfort comes from telling someone you care about them, telling someone the hard truth and not just flattering them um, from doing chores that you don't want to do. Like those are all uncomfortable things. Mm -hmm. So, and those are all attributes. So I can, you can see on the background here, I have this, little paper it's right there there's six core values i've created for myself um basically targets i want to hit each and every day one of them is to be example of god's love mm -hmm. and the other is to positively impact people so i know every morning i wake up that's the target i'm going for i might not get there i might not look 100 percent, but it's the process of trying to be that mm -hmm. that i get closer and i'm refined each day and i become a different person right? Like, um, so that's the relationship for me. I've noticed that faith is an action word. Um, we can pray for all these things. We can pray for more patience. Um, but what if a lot of the things that we can become more patient for just are in front of us the whole time? Right. No, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. And love hearing how it, how intentionally you're you're making your faith your own and uh, and living it out. Um, maybe as one of our last questions here, what advice can you give our staff and our students about how to grow in endurance and to persevere through the adversity in their own lives? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, well, I know adversity is always going to be there, mm -hmm. roadblocks, hardships. Um, they're always going to be there. It's how you view them 
that has the biggest impact, the lens that you view them for. So I think praying for a different perspective on things can make a big difference. And when praying, believing that you can have this different perspective and that comes through action too. So if, uh, let's say for some reason, my gym got shut down for four months to 12 months, there, there's still an opportunity in there and it might not be something I like or mm -hmm. I understand, but it's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity for focus on what's actually important. So I think a lot of these like adversity and, and uh, endurance, let's say adversity and hardships, there's usually a contrast to that. Like adversity develops a lot of strong people. Um, so it's this knowledge of why you're doing what you're doing. So really deep root yourself in why. So I have a couple bullet points here. Um, don't hide from it. Hmm. It's both a choice and an action. Um, you can't sneak your way around it. It's, it's there. How you handle it is a big deal. Um, fear is one of the biggest limiting factors in our lives, but God told us not to fear, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, but it's also one of the biggest indicators in our lives, which means that there's a lot of good things on the other side of fear. Like if I'm limited by my fear of speaking, what if that's limiting me from positive, positively impacting someone, one right. person, if that makes sense. Um, and then don't get lost in perfection or comparison because it's the process that really holds the fruit, most of the fruit anyway. Um, deeply root yourself in your purpose, like your God-given purpose and why you're doing what you're doing. And that nudge you feel is coming from God. Like if you feel fearful, um, take a second to understand why you're feeling that. And if you take a second to analyze it, it's usually not as big a deal. Like 95% of our fears live in our head. Right. And it's just one foot in front of the other that you slowly gain more and more confidence. It's that comfort circle. So you start here, you do something, you get more comfortable and just keeps growing and growing. Um, so choice is action and your God-given why. Cool. Hey, well, thanks for sharing that. Uh, if any of our students or staff want to follow you on social media, where would they, where would they find you? Yeah, there's three different places. Uh, my personal one is at Matt Chouinard, um, M-A-T-T-C-H-E-N-A-R-D. I haven't had to spell my last name in a while, so that was close. <laughs> and then at The Purpose Shift, um, and then at GP Health and Fitness. Cool. Yeah, right on. So staff, students, if any of you want to see some of the stuff that, that Matt does in his own personal life or even in the gym that he that he uh, runs, uh, you should check some of those out. We'll probably have, have that available for you to, to see. So Matt, thank you so much for coming to join us today and sharing what uh, the things that you've been up to and what you've been learning. We really appreciate it. And uh, all the best to you and your family. Appreciate having me.